Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the print days. Uh, and uh, it's good to see such a high turner despite three competing expert lectures, and that you're attending my lecture. My name is Rudinger Maas, and I am the CEO of Fachverband Medienproduktion. Have been in the graphical industry over 25 years, so I am, as you'd say, a dinosaur, an old hand in the graphical industry. And in fact, I am absolute print and enthusiast and emotionalized. So everything you will hear about print today, of course, has a certain trend to it, although I try to stay as uh, neutral as possible and uh, provide you with some facts. It may well be the, that I'll have to cuff once or twice because the uh, few... Um, consequences of a cold I had that I couldn't run off for five weeks, but I'll try my best. Well, today we would like to look at print and sustainability, and um, this requires a decision on many levels. On the one hand, uh, sustainability is not a new theme. Roughly 13 or 14 years ago, we launched our first initiative on sustainability in the graphical industry. Back then, 13, 14 years ago, this was a huge hype sustainability in the graphical industry uh, pop up basically uh, climate compensation printing in an environmentally or climate neutral way and then we did congresses amen uh, meetings then there was a uh, certain downturn because many companies because of economic conditions had no time left and no money left to um, deal with uh, sustainability and investment required for adaptations but for a few months now no actually for two or three years again this topic is on the agenda again, not only in societal terms, because we can watch it every day in TV, read it in the headlines in the news, but sustainability in the graphical industry, what do we have to do with it? Well, and what can we do in this environment? At present... This is not a lecture where I will um, familiarize you with the basics and how great uh, print is in terms of sustainability or how um, much the uh, graphical industry can score points with users. No, I want to present facts from a very recent survey, but this is not going to be a basic lecture. But uh, I want to inspire you to actually look at this topic from a different angle, to introduce a mind shift and um, to probably also part with some uh, statements or loci <coughs> and actually um, um, step uh, to the side and uh, right now print and sustainability especially in the graphical industry and in the um, public uh, have come under a lot of pressure you will have heard that some uh, food retail companies have actually said we will no do prints any longer we won't produce any unsolicited um, advertising any longer no more supplements because print is not sustainable as such and if we stop doing print products and this is our contribution to uh, make the world a more climate-friendly world. This is not SMEs, it is big groups of companies, not only from food retail, but also DIY stores, other big groups. That, in actual fact, uh, from the sustainability viewpoint or from a conviction or maybe also to set themselves apart from the competition to uh, um, actually put the uh, sustainability label on their forehead. We are sustainable now, we're doing all digitally, no more print. And this configuration out there in the market, this is like a boxing um, match, not uh, with a brand owners and the graphical industry, but it is a fight between the individual media channels. One media channel is print and uh, people say in the press, for instance, oh, print, um, you actually chop trees and, and you uh, sacrifice forests for print. And on the other hand, we've got the digital media, whether it's email apps or whatever, they are all of a sudden great because there are no trees chopped for this and there are no foreigners sacrificed for this. And this fight uh, between the media channels about sustainability, I think, is <coughs> absolutely superfluous because... Um, 
companies are simply losing one media channel and um, are no longer focusing on print, hoping, of course, that they can return one day saying, well, without print, things do not work so well. And the second thing is that this uh, mindset um, um, and to stop doing inserts and supplements because of sustainability reasons, this not only affects the inserts or the unsolicited supplements, no, it also impacts print as a discipline and it is demonized whether it's corporate communication whether it's dialogue uh, marketing make mailings whether it's classical print activities or commercial printing or whatever and what we lack is a differentiated consideration there is a relatively fatal status i'd say and what is perfectly clear, and we're all faced with this, through the changed videos of our target groups, not only older target groups, also younger yeah, target groups, the digital natives who are becoming decision makers now, that um, there's also a selection strategy for media channels. And these, this selection needs to change. You, you, we don't have to discuss this, but we will also see some examples in a minute showing that um, this argument that everybody's actually um, communicating digitally is probably not so true and that this is definitely not a foundation to decide against print. And what I said before, the uh, prevailing um, opinion among many that uh, the print product because of paper production um, and that uh, uh, cellulose or paper is needed and that forests must be sacrificed for this and um, that somebody is afraid that uh, there won't be any urban forests less because print products are produced. Well, I will also give you some examples and a few facts and figures in a minute showing that this is nonsense. But the problem about it is that these things are hit the headlines because one Big, some big-headed guys said this and the journalist who actually um, reports this has not properly researched then uh, communication decision makers often take wrong decisions based on a lack of information, as we will see in a minute. There are numerous studies and surveys, not only by the Federal Environmental Office, but also by neutral companies on how sustainable some media channels are or individual um, steps of the print channel process are. And when you actually use this information to to take a strategic decision, then everything's fine. But if you're not informed and then take the wrong decision nevertheless, then I think this is problematic. And there, there is, of course, this target group, the, the digital natives, who at the end of the day have a uh, one-sided mindset because they have not been socialized with print they have not been they have not grown up with uh, print and if the digital natives are in decision making positions in brand companies then they don't have print on the radar they don't even know what print can do they don't know uh, about the uh, diversity that print can offer in communication and how print can actually not only push digital channels but also follow up on, on digital channels. And uh, what is uh, necessary is to educate this target group in terms of sustainability, but also in terms of a sustainable impact, because a sustainable impact also has to do with sustainability. I'm, I'm not actually uh, accusing the, uh, this target group of, of not knowing anything about it, but um, I am actually telling this the graphical industry because they have failed to educate this target group. So um, then, of course... Um, print uh, the as an eco killer um, that print cannot be recycled and consumes tremendous amounts of energy of course paper factories and everything uh, print shops large print shops uh, that have printing presses that are as big as a five family home they of course need a lot of uh, energy but only because they lo uh, require a lot of energy you must not demonize them They're many companies have already invested lots of money in this area. 
and are working with energy from uh, 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 renewable energies because they have their own PV systems. But we will talk about this later. This would be actually going in too much detail. So before we take a decision or before advertisers decide or before we educate, we of course have to ask some questions that make sense. So prior to actually demonizing a complete media channel before we no longer use this media channel we first have to give it some thought are we speaking of ecological sustainability co2 emissions and climate neutrality uh, or is it ecology uh, the circular economy or maybe um, everything that relates to it of course, sustainability is not an ecological question. E sustainability has many more facets to it. The economic sustainability, for instance, can a company really afford to forego the print channel? and uh, then do without this channel among the target group is it economically sustainable because you're just saving the printing costs or would it make more sense to give it some thought to um, how a print product can be leveraged differently you do not say we will uh, forego unsolicited mass inserts but uh, let's be more professional by um, uh, opting for personalized print communication. So lower circulations, but more targeted. And then, of course, uh, you um, uh, achieve a more economical use of print. And this, of course, provides ROI for print channels. Social sustainability should not be forgotten either. In Germany, Central Europe, Europe, of course, um, this is not so much of a big issue. The basics of social uh, sustainability, such as minimum wage, this has all been clarified by by, by law, but um, there is also some uh, backlog demand. Um, uh, pay by performance rather than um, a minimum wage. This would be quite interesting to discuss uh, whether social sustainability exists in this industry or not. In strategic terms, it is also important to factor in the legal framework for uh, channels. The email marketing, the digital channels, uh, you ha they have a double opt-in. For, for print, you don't need a double opt-in. The sensitivity for the uh, General Data Protection Ordinance um, has uh, grown over the years among target groups when it comes to unsolicited advertising. With print, it's all different, of course because print um, uh, enjoys another credibility in society. I'm not saying that this is an argument in favor of print, but this is just one little element that should be uh, accounted for. Then you should uh, definitely make sure um, which uh, information basis is used for your strategic decisions. Um, have I read this in Wikipedia and uh, do I really know whether this statement is wrong or right? Or have I looked at valuable creditworthy studies and comparisons as a basis for my decision whether print is really sustainable or not? And the same, of course, also applies to the other digital media and the changed media use in the target group. Is this really true? Do the digital natives only obtain digital information? We'll have a look at it in a minute. Then the image element. This is also a reason uh, to actually take such a spectacular t decision. You can see that this decision was actually uh, presented by the press, by the business journals, on TV, so it seems to be related to the co corporate image. But at the end of the day, 
it's not meaningful when you don't know on, on, on which basis the decision was taken. The differentiated, the differentiated view uh, should not lead to foregoing print 100%, but maybe uh, unsolicited advertising should be foregone. And um, for this strategic decision, it is so important to think of the ROI. How much do I invest in a media channel one with a result of my communication uh, that I get in form of a lead or maybe as, as a sale? And how can I really compare this on a on, on one-to-one -one basis? Is this really comparable? And not only ROI, return on the investment, but how can I bridge the gap to economic sustainability? Now, three or four facts. First of all, myth number one. How, uh, what does the changed uh, media use look like in the various target groups? Well, the IFH uh, media analysis uh, is really recent and it shows that all over the target groups, uh, the point is not working for this one at all, um, that uh, print use in the target groups, this only refers to the use of advertising inserts in dailies or weeklies. So this is just one medium. It's not all over print. But the use of these supplements that these big companies simply stopped producing has not changed among the uh, print-only users. Looking at the readers of online uh, leaflets who use apps, for instance, then this has, of course, uh, changed over time. They communicate more digitally, but even the print-only users uh, read more of these uh, digital uh, in, uh, leaflets. They do both. So, the analysis of the media use for print, uh, for unsolicited uh, inserts, there is no reason to say, well, I'll simply discontinue all of my print advertising. Of course, when you look at the dual users, the hybrid users, you might wonder, well, if they no longer have the print channel, would the uh, curve of the digital only use go up? Or do they say, well, um, it only worked in sales because they were motivated by both channels to buy. So over time, when you compare, uh, will there be an increased share of readers, both in the digital area and in the analog area, the number will stay the same. So what I said before, to just say, um, I'll uh, discontinue print because um, I don't have any better information is probably not a wise idea. So from my point of view, it would be a wrong decision to uh, discontinue print when looking at uh, just the figures of the uh, media usage of uh, digital uh, readers. This is not rocket science. Um, hybrid readers, uh, the number of hybrid readers will continue to rise and in the long term the digital use will go up and nobody is questioning this trend. But the, the question that uh, really arises is, does it really make sense to go digital only? Then myth number two, um, that is print less sustainable? And in the IFH survey, um, it was said that 70% uh, of the uh, persons polled say um, paper production um, uh, consumes excessive amounts of water, but they're malinformed. 
with uh, the uh, this is just one reference source but there are even more sources available for this in fact um, in paper production and it makes no difference whether this is fresh fiber or recycled paper 93 percent and times even more of the water used is reclaimed it is returned and they do not return the sludge to the rivers no they purify the water i'm aware of paper factories uh, that actually have to clean the water, the treat the water before they start the paper production. And when they return the water, <coughs> then this returned water is cleaner than the water they th they've taken out of the river. I'm not saying that they're the best uh, wherever, whatever. But uh, what we know from the mindset is that there's too much water being consumed for paper pr production. This is not true. You clearly have to say that the water is used and returned to the circle, the, the cycle. Compared to printed uh, leaflets, a digital product, whether it's an email or whatever, uh, uses uh, or emits less CO2. This uh, opinion is held by 62% of the target groups polled. This is a fatal um, opinion because there are no meaningful comparisons that really prove um, uh, the print product with the circulation with this target group has a CO2 or climate balance um, of X and then you uh, take a digital medium with uh, with the same target group. These comparisons do not exist. And here already you can see uh, that the education, uh, wherever uh, you get it from, is, uh, here you read that when you send an email, uh, one MB to 10 people, then it is uh, like driving for 500 meters by car. So theoretically speaking, I would require a comparative figure for print. So I would have to say, is the other 500 meters driven by car really the currency that allows me to compare the two channels? It isn't. But there is so much education needed here to inform which media channel uh, produces which CO2 emissions. And uh, the challenge posed by increasing digitalization and that there are more uh, that there's more CO2 emissions by server farms or uh, processing centers. This is a fact, but we do not have these facts and these numbers for comparison. And the last point, 51% of the target group polled believes that for print products and uh, paper, forests are sacrificed so that fewer and fewer trees exist. Um, this, the contrary is true, at least for Germany. Um, forests, real for afforestation is taking place. We shouldn't talk about the uh, forest status report and how uh, ill uh, German forests are. But through paper production for print products, we do not uh, reduce forests. Uh, and it makes sense. It's logical. Whoever uh, is familiar with sustainable forestry, they would actually ruin their own business model if they simply chopped the trees and uh, turned them into cellulase and wouldn't reforest. Um, so for generations, they've been working to um, reforest and replant trees. So again, this myth... Uh, um, is not true either. Next myth, uh, paper is uh, um, a wasteful product. 72% um, of the papers used for print are actually recycled in Germany and Europe. So this is really a, a resor resource uh, that uh, actually is used for the circular economy. So again, the last myth is not 
true. So 49% of the people polled are uh, poorly informed. Then uh, people think it is bad for the environment. This is commonplace because it contains cellulose, paper and chemistry is used or chemicals uh, are used to bleach the cellulose. Um, we need a lot of education here too, in b both ways actually, because when I can document that uh, I am already capable of uh, buying a climate neutral paper today, then everybody has to ask themselves in the graphical industry, how did they become climate neutral? Have the parties involved really done everything to avoid CO2 emissions and uh, only uh, compensated for the uh, residual emissions? Or does the CO2 neutrality result from the fact that a paper was produced in the north of Europe by paper factories in countries that use 95% nuclear power and nuclear power has no CO2 emissions and you may all wonder which paper do I use the one uh, produced with nuclear power but uh, this is another question of conceptual conceptual sustainability so how deep do I dig or drill so when we look at print and uh, ponder on whether it is sustainable or maybe detrimental, then we really have to see um, what is happening in the graphical industry and what has happened over the past 10 to 12 years. We talked about recycling paper and the sustainable forestry. We talked about the circular economy. We talked about EMAS and co. So there are many company management processes where um, SMEs, uh, skilled craftspeople, print shops, um, have invested in processes and optimized their process in order to be sustainable, to not waste any resources, etc. Then the ISO standard, uh, uh, process standard for offset printing. Uh, through this ISO standard, um, uh, the uh, legislator makes sure, uh, make sure that uh, less resources are used. For instance, the ramp up waste paper is reduced. This uh, has happened a lot over the past few years. Then, um, digital printing, uh, the avoidance of stray losses, uh, uh, unsolicited or unpersonalized advertising, um, and converting this into fully uh, personalized uh, advertising to not um, actually lose out on uh, on waste. Then the use of renewable energies. How many companies in the graphical industry already have invested in generating their own renewable energies, uh, regardless of whether this is PV systems, or energy efficiency, climate compensation. So all of these measures uh, that we've listed here, climate compensation should always be listed at the very end because the strategic orientation is avoidance, um, reduction, and if you can't avoid or reduce, you have to compensate for these emissions. So the facts I gave you and the individual process steps in the graphical industry have over the past 10 to 15 years uh, manifested very strongly and when you looked at the facts related to this and um, then you will hopefully obtain another um, perspective on uh, the sustainability of print products. How sustainable print products can be in communication will be covered in the next uh, part of my presentation. Right now we hear a lot of discussions whether one channel is media channel is more sustainable than the other but at the end of the day this is not the real proper basis for discussion. The uh, discussion should be we have to do anything, everything to be, to be sustainable. So the bottom, the foundation of our discussion must be a set one, regardless whether
whether I'm digital or analog. I have to always do everything to communicate as sustainably as possible. Now, when we look at the impact, the sustainable impact of a media channel and focus on print, then we always speak of value added printing. So all of the possibilities made available by print to generate an added value inside a print product in order to offer the reader, the user, more value, interactive uh, interactivity or interaction with the uh, uh, printed uh, matter to keep the media active as long as possible and avoid the uh, circular fire. And the added value printed or value added printing, uh, there are four overriding topics. And um, this is what print can do. And not that it is particularly brilliant or the paper is particularly tactile. No, all, all of the four headlines um, are actually uh, contributing to the impact on users or readers. And again, uh, you always have to think think about which uh, approaches of value added printing can be embedded in my print. The uh, value um, first is interactive print. So whatever a print product uh, can do to inspire a user to interactively deal with the product. The easiest version is a, a QR code. So when there is an expectation related to this QR code, can I win anything? Then they will get out uh, their electronic device and scan the QR code and will get an added value. So print as a media bridge towards digital channels. This is a value and it creates interaction. Everything we have in further processing, folding um, mechanisms, scratch cards, rip up cards or tear off cards to make a um, printed matter even more attractive and to make it more desirable. So a lot, the longer a, a user deals uh, interactively with a print product or a printed matter, the, the longer um, it, he or she will remember it. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, duration of usage is of course prolonged. And this makes the product uh, more sustainable. Then experience print. So this is everything in terms of print finishing, whether it's metallizing, varnishing, all, all of those extra characteristics that help to um, transport the brand image. Uh, look at the automotive industry, for example, and they want to present the interior of a high-end car costing 50,000 euros. Then, of course, I want to show the leather seating as, as uh, uh, authentically as possible. You even smell the leather when you open the catalog. This, the, the same smell that you would have when you enter the car. So this is a multi-sensorial experience that the print product can ensure. Emotional print is everything that actually addresses me personally, everything that uh, is fully personalized. Not hello, Christoph, or hello, Mr. Meyer, or Mr. Muller, Mr. Smith. I know how Christoph actually interacts with my brand, and this is why I will actually care cater to him with individualized offers. So you get the same brochure, the same medium for me, but with fully individualized information. And this brochure addresses you personally. When Christoph reads his name, he can't but uh, read this uh, medium, Christoph. Um, he learned this as a child when he uh, learned to read. But um, he today sees this image of his 
his name uh, unless it is misspelled and then the reader can't do anything else but read and personalization not only works uh, through names it also works with geo individualization you see a geo map and you see the city that you live in and immediately you receive an personalized information uh, it doesn't read uh, new york but dusseldorf and all of a sudden you feel addressed you g create a bond so why dusseldorf uh, what's happening in dusseldorf maybe there's your private address or your company address um, featured. This again means a high degree of emotionaliz emotionalization. And last but not least, surprise print. Surprise. Um, well, print is capable of surprising users. I'm saying right away that these two um, cannot always be reconciled. Many of the things that are already feasible in terms of surprise print are not necessarily uh, sustainable. So how do I weigh things? Uh, let, uh, let's look at uh, electroluminescence. So this is light emitted by a printed matter. Most recipients receive this uh, and open this and you s they see it uh, shine, are surprised. This is a wow effect. And then they interact with the print. How does this work? And uh, the, this actually has to bear a CE symbol. Um, it's a d different question. Look at video imprint or NFC. Print is capable of doing it, of delivering this, and actually use the surprise factor. But you always have to weigh whether it's sustainable enough and how sustainable it is. Is it ecologically uh, sustainable, a red uh, uh, hook uh, or a green hook, or is it sustainable in, in lifetime? Just look at the cookbook, for instance, and in the cookbook you open the first cover and you actually include an NFC tag, and the NFC tag ensures that the digital in extension is available on the web. And there you can actually watch the the starred chef explain the dish. So explicit content you only get through the NFC. Yeah, but I don't have to include an NFC tag. I could use a QR code. Of course you can. But maybe you as an innovative chef or an innovative restaurant, you need this uh, innovative uh, image transfer, the NFC tag, because it's still so hip. Instead of saying, well, I'm going for the old fashioned QR code that nobody's interested in. Again, this also needs to always be considered when you want to ensure the impact and the sustainability of a printed uh, product. This was just to show you the dimensions delivered by printed matter. And this needs to all be factored in strategically before I opt in favor or against a media channel. And the same applies to digital communication. I have selected one of our um, industry initiatives where we actually um, really uh, provided a deep dive where we really looked at the individual elements of the customer journey because we're doing communication for our customers and the customers uh, don't we be lost in the mass no they want to actually support Support the shoppers with the information they need in the um, a customer journey. And this means perceived uh, um, use, then the brand image, whether this is transported, desirability. So, how does a medium? How is it perceived by the recipient and what does it do with the recipient? So, well, so we have to think how at the end of the day we can impress people sustainably and their ecological sustainability is included, but also communicative sustainability. How sustainable is the impact of a medium that the recipient gets in terms of attraction and um, attractiveness. And do I want to deal with this medium or not? 
it has to do at times with awareness because it is particularly glossy or particularly hip or um, because somebody says I waited for this printed product because this is my bedtime reading on Friday night to go shopping on Saturday morning then the high recognition uh, levels are important. We have to get into the minds of our customers um, uh, and shoppers and print is perfectly suited to do to be multisensorial. Then credibility print um, has uh, this uh, credibility bonus, then value and appreciation. Um, it makes a difference whether you have an unsolicited mass insert or whether you you provide a fully personalized supplement and at the end of the day response we have to ensure that the communication we produce regardless of the channel it triggers people prompts people to buy to act it's, it must be a call for action so uh, um, all of the uh, arguments speaking in favor of print. If we completed all this, we could be speaking a whole day. Print is the only um, medium that is multisensorial, um, even uh, with, with the exception of taste, unless you actually put a little bag of marshmallows and, and uh, glue it into uh, the supplement. So print actually approaches uh, um, uh, uh, or is very close to, to social beings. And print is an ambassador and it can transport the brand value through the four levels, uh, the credibility, then the long use for life. A print product must be used for a long time. A book, for instance, compared to more volatile digital media, at times, so there's no alternative to print. Look at packaging, for instance. Okay, there's unprepacked goods, but that's a different topic. Um, sustainability is not mutually uh, exclusive with um, um, print finishing um, because many of the uh, print finishing is recyclable. There are top labels for printed products. The Blue Angel, for instance. This is the highest um, sustainability image possible for um, in Germany. Germany. And I'm always sh uh, saying, do not opt in favor of one and against the other, but opt in favor of multi-channel publishing. Which media has uh, which benefits when? And uh, try to focus on coexistence of channels. And this is my concluding appeal. We shouldn't be discussing how sustainable digital uh, uh, channels are or d communication is and how unsustainable print is. No, we as the graphical industry have to see how in the interest of our uh, corporate uh, uh, customers' uh, success, multi-channel communication can be realized. There's no either or for multi-channel communication. No, there's both and. How can each medium uh, actually uh, um, produce its effect in the most uh, sustainable way? And each medium has... Uh, uh, this requirement of becoming more and more sustainable because there's no medium that will be as sustainable today as it will be in the future. We constantly have to work on an increasing sustainability. Uh, I hope I was able to provide you with some inspirations for this mind shift, some ideas for digital and print. If you have any questions, I'm of course available for you. I do not know if, if anybody of print is here and that is why I can't tell you whether these presentations will all be made available after the event. If you want to have it, uh, leave me with your business card, then I will send you the PDF. And then 10 seconds, shelling, sending you my shop window. On the 16th and 17th of May in Dusseldorf, you will have our print and digital convention in cooperation with Messe Dusseldorf. This is a Congress trade fair. 
um, four parallel lecture forums over two days plus exhibition with over 80 exhibitors and you're cordially invited um, and you can pick up uh, the leaflets. And now I'm available for questions and wish you a lovely day.